live, going live. Now we're live. Are we live now? Now we're live. Look at what color are my lips? Orangish red. <laughs> what have I done to myself? <laughs> Hello, I am a clown. Hello, I am a clown. <laughs> I am cloud too. Like I clown today? Clown. I think I'm just really digging orange right now. Mm. I think we're just still on a high from the science museum. Uh, or a hungover from the science museum, <laughs> if you're one of us named me. So, the local... <laughs> <Still> drink grace! <laughs> the local science center has this great thing where it's like, hey, here's a night where only adults can come no and we kids. give you drinks. Just grown-ups. Play with all the toys. Yeah, and it's a very interactive science yeah. center, which is hilarious if you give all the adults drinks there's um there was a lot of great highlights to the night there was there was a hunch for a lip gloss that was in mysteriously in, in the car the whole time yeah yeah don't ask yeah there was we won we, we tied we somehow tied a forensic science trivia thing when thank we, you my favorite murder thank you my favorite murder by <laughs> yeah. the way but we missed the first question and we got like half of them wrong so and yeah I we have, still tied for first so i'll fucking take it and then the, the trip they sent me up for the uh tiebreaker they made yeah they made one person there was on. no science involved in the tiebreaker no the tiebreaker was have you are you a have you seen law and order criminal intent no, uh, SVU. Oh, like Special Victims Unit, yes. And it's like, how many different prosecutors have been on the show? And I was like, like that has you. nothing to do with science. That's not science. Yeah. And I had no clue, so I said 42. Um, and then followed by, what else did we do then? Uh, I kicked a TARDIS open. You kicked a TARDIS open and scared the <laughs> shit out of people. That's what you drink Grace does. And it was amazing. <laughs> and then we will post a picture soon. <gasps> we found we found magic. We found magic. We found Legit. we found gold crystals. We found gold crystals, guys. And the only reason I did not purchase them is because they were ten dollars a fucking crystal. I know, but I mean, knowing what gold crystals do, yeah. well worth it. Well worth the price. But they were like <sighs> colored. I mean, they weren't exactly screen accurate, but they were pretty damn yeah, close, man. and it was really hilarious. I, I don't, look, thank goodness we only had two drink grace. <laughs> Because three drink grace would have pocketed. Would have all of oh. would have been like this goes here. This goes here. <laughs> I would no, I would not have pocketed them, but I would have been like all of my money. If it wasn't at the science center, yeah, you would have pocketed it. Okay, so here's the truth: four to five drink grace would have pocketed one. <laughs> but I am more likely to steal, steal things that aren't for purchase. Like yeah. I was really good at stealing like salt shakers or like steak knives or. Just random shit or like that. In my family, uh, copper mule mugs. There you somewhere. go. There you go. Things of that sort. Um, but three drink race would have been like, here's my credit card. <laughs> so many crystals. All I, need, of the I need them in my house for reasons. Uh, yeah. For <laughs> activities. <laughs> There was also I how bad that sounds. Well, it, it makes me remember, like, because it was adults only at the science center, there were so many dick jokes. All of the dick jokes. All of the dick jokes. Mm -hmm. The entire night. Starting when some one of the um a, a, amateur astronomers who brought their um, oh, yeah. their we telescopes. Saw Saturn. We saw Saturn and we saw the moon, and the guy who had Mars up was instead, he had to retrack it and was showing us these beautiful pictures yeah. that he's taken with his telescope. And one of them was the Eagle Nebula, which, of course, as people know, the Pillars of Creation infamous uh, Hubble photos from there. Uh -huh. But most people don't recognize it because the shot was a wide, wide, wide shot, and it's, you know, different colors because it's false colored from Hubble, and yeah. it's rotated. The Hubble photograph is rotated so the pillars stand upright. But the picture he had was more of a natural angle, so it just looks like a giant penis. Yeah. And as he was like, well, three penises, the actually. The universe's penis. And so then he was kind of, like, thrown off because I was just like, yeah, it's the thing that looks like a penis to the people I was it's with. a very matter-of-fact Raven Paul <laughs> Wayne. And he is... Again, I am bummed because I was out <laughs> getting one of my two drinks at this moment. And he's <laughs> used to, I think, you know, working with... Children. Children, and not someone who just... Describes not one, just one, one who acts like children, <laughs> <laughs> and that proceeded to kick off an entire night of every dick joke that you could make was made. Yeah, hush, kitty. 
Hosh Kaylee time. Okay. There's no water in this at all. No, anymore. no things to report otherwise. Yeah, it was uh but it was it was good. Good times to uh, stand by for a picture coming to the we Patreon. We'll post a picture. Soon. Yes. I um, promise. Okay. Are know. you ready to start? Oh, we're ready. Let's do it. Episode one thirty eight. Episode one thirty eight. I don't remember my AKA for this. Okay. I actually just well you'll see. Okay. Ready? Yes. Percussion. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to an ep-, ep. Whoa, we're gonna just start that <laughs> over again. <laughs> Rewind. Okay, go. Welcome to episode 138 of There's No Place Like Terra, Stargate First Watch Rewatch Podcast. I am Nixie. I am Grace. And today we're going over our season seven, episode six, Lifeboat, aka, okay. Hang on. Okay. Okay. There's a few AKAs. Okay. The greatest one, which I came up with like 30 seconds ago. Okay. AKA, oh God, why? <laughs> AKA, split, but before split. <laughs> and AKA, the lifeboat that launched the Daniel ship. Oh, yeah. No, the Daniel <laughs> ship is strong in here. My AKA. The Daniel the Dan- the ship has sailed. It's so sailed. <laughs> My AKA was just. Women and children first. <laughs> We're going down. <laughs> um, yes, this is is lifeboat. Uh, oh. I knew, I knew before Grace knew that this is a Grace episode in the strongest of the Grace episode. Spoiler terms. alert: tears, <laughs> all the tears. I'm like sitting there just crying, and I was like, "Fuck you guys! <laughs> Fuck all of this right now." <laughs> Oh God, this hurts! Fuck yeah. you, Michael Shanks, for bringing emotions out of me. No fucking kidding. Yeah, no, we we can just right off the bat. This is a shared terror award. Uh huh. Like seventy five percent of it is to Michael Shanks, and yeah. twenty a strong twenty five percent is to uh, Terrell. Look, yeah, we'll just say best actor and yeah. best supporting actress. Oh yes, and done. Yeah, two terror awards. I mean, this is. Everything they do is basically in a black box theater. Yeah. With nothing. Literally, yeah, literally. And it's just a tour de mind. Tour de Janiel. A tour de Janiel. Look, that's hard to say, but I'm committed to it We're now. We're going with Janiel. <laughs> so, this first aired on July 18th, 2003, written by Brad Wright, who does not come out of the woodworks to write episodes often, but when he does, damn. Yeah. They're oh, good. Dude, why you gotta do like that? Uh, directed <laughs> by Mr. DeLuise. Uh, and I know, so I know, I, I don't know if the episode was completely written or like the brain worm of it and it was plotted, but this was, Brad sort of came up with this idea mm-hmm. specifically for Michael Shanks. Because oh. there's not a ton of actors who can do this role. It, it, it was well done. And I'll even say the other actor who have uh, plays having multiple personalities yeah. for them, he held his own. Oh, but yeah. my God, what Michael Shanks did is something spectacular. It's, it's amazing. So Only th- ever witnessed by, uh, oh God, I just forgot to say, James McAvoy. Yes. In fucking in Split. Split. <laughs> which if you have not seen it. I have oh, not yet, but I really, really want to God, see it. God, yeah. That movie... Uh, which centers around uh, DID, yeah. Dissociative Identity Disorder, um, was so intense that I was started to feel like my own mind was splitting. For I had to take a break from it. Well, I want to see that so that I can see what is it, Mr. Glass or Glass? Or yes, I want to really want to see that. So I want to see um, yeah. Split first, but yeah, for sure, this when he came up with this, all of a sudden there was no Michael Shanks on the show. Right. So this episode had to be shelved. Damn. And all of yeah. a sudden we got a Michael Shanks back. It's 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 Shanks time. It's it's Shanks time. Yeah. <laughs> it's Shanks again. <laughs> Sorry, everything gets again. It does. Well, they're about to come up the next uh Sharknado, so I guess it fits. Shark again. Um also James Park who does play Farron. Um like okay. I recognize him from Red State, the Kevin Smith oh, okay. film. Um, but he's had also bit parts in some Tarantino films. 
Okay. Um, he's uh, Edgar McGraw in everything that Edgar's been in, like Kill Bill and Grindhouse. Oh. And he also appeared in Halo 8 and Django and Chains. So that's why his face looks familiar. Probably, yeah. Got it. Because uh, okay. I know you've seen many of those yeah. films multiple All of the times. <laughs> a bazillion times. He's also been in At episodes- some point, I liked Tarantino, but now with a, with a, you know, with a boyfriend, Jesse, or excuse me, as I've been asked to call him now. Life partner Jesse. Life partner Jesse. Um, Co-pilot Jesse. <laughs> yeah, life partner Jesse, which actually he requested. Because um, he's like, I'm not just the boyfriend anymore. I was like, yeah. fair. Fair enough. Um, I hear that. Now it's like, whether I liked it or not, yeah. Tarantino just happens at our house very often. Uh-huh. Just like many other things. Yes. But. He's also been in episodes of Everything Under the Sun from Bones to Numbers to see. Like, he's everywhere. Gotcha. Done. Um, so the one thing to note in this episode is that you don't see as much Jack as you normally do. Oh, right. Um, and you often sort of see him from over the shoulders. Artie's father actually passed away while they were filming oh, this episode. Yeah. So most of the epi- most of the shots of his shots are actually done sort of as pickups. Gotcha. While the rest of the cast is doing other things makes sense um but he's still oh, that's um, a tough one yeah most of the shots are actually uh, bill nikolai which is his photo double okay which just happens to be he he was in a previous life a, a university english professor and an academic librarian who holds masters in both education and library oh, is sciences. That all? yeah that's all wow yeah talk about it changing careers <laughs> damn well you know when you retire you gotta do something fun uh, apparently so but also imagine having like a, a, a teacher or a professor as handsome as RDA. I know. Oh, yeah. I'd be in that class often. Uh huh. I'd be like, hi, teacher. <laughs> like, I've got a lot of great professors, but no one has hit that spot yet. So, and, and I, this only comes up, this has absolutely nothing to do with anything, but we, we missed the second half of the most recent season of Will and Grace. Of oh, the new uh-huh. And I don't know if you've seen one of the episodes uh-huh. where she she's grace is is starting to date someone who work who lives in the building uh-huh. and they're like well that's awkward blah 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 and and so they like half break up yeah where she thought they broke up so jack takes her out to a bar and they pass one of her professors and we find out that she you know yeah. went where yeah she well, yeah you got was hot for teacher yeah well everybody gets hot for teacher at least once well she went a little further than hot for teacher mm. um and then and then Proceeds to meet a handsome young man at the same bar or whatever. Is it and, the son? Son of the teacher? Well, man? does it? They do <laughs> it in the in the in the women's room. Oh, come to find out that the hot young hot man is the son of the person in the building. Oh, whose person in the building's father is the professor. Oh, so the she, son of the son of a teacher. So man. she has she's she's had sex with three generations, generations. Of, of son of a teacher man. I just like saying son of a teacher man. <laughs> the only one who could help me speak was the son of a teacher man. By the way, while mourning Aretha is oh, yeah. did, mm-hmm. I did find that version of I found her version of that song and oh, I was like Fuck, I forgot amazing. this is a thing. Yeah, can we just, like, raise a glass for uh, Aretha the Franklin? Queen, the, the fucking the, the everything. Khaleesi of I'm soul. not even going to just say soul. She's just uh, the yeah, queen. Yeah, she, yeah. Queen. I, especially, you know, uh, as someone who's from Detroit. Yeah. From the home of Motown. From, uh, she's just, I had, that was a hard one. Yeah, yeah. So um, there's a lot of things that are formative in, 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 in you seeing your times when you're little. Um, the song, You Make Me Feel Like a Natural oh Woman. Oh, my God. In my formative years was a song that taught me how to, like, be feeling myself. Oh, my. As it you're did like, for, I think, half the women, women on ever. the planet. Yeah. As much as that song seems to be about someone else, which can be troubling, I don't think anyone ever told it that way. No. It was always like, that's right, I am. That's me. Yeah, and it's I am the, the one specifically. And and the day the day she passed, there is one specific version of that song that I think I I am not kidding when I listened to it eight to ten times. Yeah, was her performance at the Kennedy Center Honors a couple of years ago? Get it? When girl. she fucking brought the house yeah. down, yeah. and her beauty, just also her her the way she owned the stage and that she came out with her little clutch. 
and, yeah. her, and her fur coat and Santa at the keyboard. And Carol King's like, what fuck she's singing and playing? And she oh, just shit. was yeah. losing herself. She's like, don't worry, I got this. And she like yeah. stretches and out. And so she then just ready. starts, she starts playing the piano and Zoss and put her clutch up there. And all of a sudden she like takes the mic and goes stands, you know, center stage yeah. and starts going. All of a sudden she just takes her fucking coat off. Yeah. And as the coat hits the ground, the entire audience just stands yeah. up and like That's what you do. Yeah. In the presence of magic. Uh-huh. Um yeah. anyway. We Anyways, miss you. we I was rocking out real hard on the way home that day. <laughs> yeah. I was doing one of the things that I do when it's a rough week where yeah. I was like, no news, no news, no yeah. news until I get to work because as some of you know, I work a swing shift. Yeah. So I come in and I take the brunt of the evenings. So if I wake up in the morning and listen to news all day, I don't get any time to decompress. No, it's, yeah. So, so I don't do news in the evenings on weekends. Right. Yeah. So that's my decompression time. Uh, so I get the Nixie text and I was like, okay, be prepared, be prepared. And so on the drive in, of course, I'm listening to the Aretha mix on Spotify. Oh, yeah. Spotify is no slouch. And I was like, well, I shouldn't have done this to myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to her music like all day. I, j I can't, I just, mm. Anyway, anyway. Uh, we miss you, Aretha. Back to the show. This is a Stargate podcast. This is not definitely not a Aretha. Motown podcast. To be fair, some days I think it should. <laughs> because Motown. Sure, yeah. Um, anyway, so we start in the middle of the mission. And that Matt, though. Oh, that matte painting. Oh, I love that matte painting. Yeah, I love a good matte. There's a couple beautiful matte paintings in this episode. The way they extend the hallways. Yeah, oh. yeah. Oh, I love the lost art of beautiful matte paintings. Mm -hmm. So um, on a desert planet, ship crash, we find out that it's called the Stromos, which yeah. is maybe a sleeper ship, maybe kind of named after the Nostromo. Oh, I was just hungry. So I was like, Stromboli. <laughs> yes. I think that's more accurate than uh -huh. the alien named, reference. <laughs> it's named the Stromboli, guys. Uh-huh. It's the shortened Clearly, I have problems. So it's crashed. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. That, that ship is lives there now. Uh -huh. um, and it's lined with pods and pods of pod people. I'm pretty sure I saw Philip J. Fry in there. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> he would be in there. Yeah. Uh, and they're in sta they're still alive, but they are in stasis. Um, it's a shipload of frozen people. Uh -huh. Except for the mummy. Except for the, yeah. <laughs> Who turns out to be not a mummy, but a person. But anyway, we don't know that yet. And Sam points out that... They did get a beacon from the ship that's most like it was remotely activated or not. Uh -huh. um, but no one is awake on the ship or not. or not. But before they can come for support, they want to get a rough head count. So Sam and Teal head off that way and Jack and Daniel go that away and they start counting. Yeah. Um, and Jack does run across one who didn't survive. Um, that's our mummy guy. And didn't count him. Yeah. And then suddenly a huge light wave wipes through the ship, knocking everyone out. So up until Credits. this point, yes. this is a horror movie. It is. Uh, this entire episode yes. is very much a horror movie. Yes. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Okay. So we just I'm just going to knock the science interesting oh, yeah. segment. Generation ships okay. are, you know, at the moment, how we would travel between stars. Because as Sam said... We don't have faster than light or FTL engine, so this is this is what you got to do because yep. it takes a really long time to get anywhere. Gotcha. So there's two ideas. There's ones like this one where, um, or Philip J. Fry, mm -hmm. uh, where you're putting in suspended animation to cross the distances. Right. Um, this is what they did in uh, like Avatar. Oh, gotcha. um, there's a lot of science fiction shows that sort of do this route because it's convenient because you can have the same actor play, play them the before same time, and yeah. after. <laughs> Um, and we can have drama when they're woken up early. That was basically the movie with... Um, what's his face and what's her face? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, God. I'm blanking on One it, One of the Chris's. Yep. And Jennifer something. Yes. Evans? No. Chris Pratt. Was it Chris, Chris yeah, Pratt? Chris Jennifer Pratt Jennifer Lawrence. And Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> My brain was, like, seeing their faces, and I was like, no I was names. Like, I saw the movie, them. and I can't name the people. <laughs> Um, so the second idea is actually a generation ship. Oh, okay. Um, and so this is where basically an entire little mini civilization okay. lives on a ship and everyone's awake. So you and, like, thrive and live. You and thrive exist. and you live. I would join that ship. And the descendants of who goes on the ship uh -huh. are the people who will make it. See, that to me would be cool. 
Unless you're one of the middle generations, which I will get to, uh -huh. and which would suck. Because all your life is on a ship. And for no, you have literally no purpose. Except to extend the life Except of Except to people. extend, yeah. So. Fair. It's a topic that, like, both of these things are topics that both science and science fiction, like, authors and writers alike. Um, even Robert Goddard, like, the rocket guy, as in the Goddard Center. The man. Uh-huh. Sorry wrote about it in 1918, like an interstellar arc where the crew would would creep along through the cosmos for centuries and be awoken at this sure. star. And a ship like that would have to be 100% self-sustaining. They'd have to figure out how to renew their food, their air, their water, power, everything. Mm. And there's the question on like how, like what would happen to humans being enclosed in a bubble like that for hundreds of years? Sure. What would happen to, like, obviously it wouldn't be a super small ship, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's what happens to um, people on a physical level, but also, like, what happens to them on a mental level. Yeah, that's um, true. And so not only would you have to deal about the morale for generations, you have these middle generations where a lot of a lot of them pro might feel that their life is completely pointless because... Yeah. You can't go anywhere else. You have no choice of being there. Sure. You're stuck there. You have no chance of going anywhere else. You you can't grow up to be some other explorer. Yeah. There's very limited jobs that you could do on the ship. Yeah, your choice is bubble or death. Yeah. Cake or death. Yeah. Um, and the the estimates, there's a lot of different estimates, but a number that I've seen is um, sort of the low end is like 160 people up to a couple hundred people Okay. because you could, and that's to have sort of normal lives and social lives sure. aboard the ship because you can have like a sperm bank, some frozen embryos, some frozen eggs for the genetic diversity of it. Yeah. But sort of, that's sort of the hundred and, you know, Somewhere around 200 is probably the minimum you need to have just like a normal, a good, like a big wedding, like a medium sized wedding. Like, that's a huge wedding. Is that a big wedding? Okay. I have no idea. <laughs> that's 200 people seems like a huge wedding in my book. Um, and then you also have like mutiny on board the ships. That's true. Like, it, you know, if you have future generations, they're like, fuck this mission. There's must be like a shit ton of vetting that needs to happen. And a lot of moral quandaries that you must address once you're up there. Because Let's say someone does. Like, what are you going to do with them? Put them in a jail? Like, when you have, like, a Dr. Smith on Lost in... Is it Smith? Yeah. On Lost in Space. Right. You know, who goes batshit crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And not for... Not batshit crazy to be batshit crazy, but he's like, I don't like this. Yeah. I want to cause some magic. And yeah. you can vet the first generation of people, but you can't vet you the later generation. don't know what's going to happen later. Yeah. Yeah. So it's... There's a lot of other issues. Also, there's, like, technology failing and cosmic rays shooting through your body sure. and, like... All these other things that can go yeah. bad. I, yeah, I guess thinking selfishly, it would be fun to go from our planet onto yes. that thing. But I'm not thinking about the next generation well, at all. And, yeah, and it's also you're like, this is fun for me. Do I give a shit about the next generation? <laughs> but I mean, that's what the boomers are doing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Zing. Zing. I'm just kidding. No to be apologies. fair, that was in my head. And I was yeah. about to say it. I, well. I, I spit it out because I'm hungover. So Tealuk wakes up first and he gets known on the radio and he yeah. finds uh, Jack first. Jack is alive, but unconscious. Same yeah. as Sam. Tealuk got the constitution save. Uh -huh. Nobody else did. No one else did. But this is why you do not split the party. Daniel mm. wakes up um, and Tealuk, like, Tealuk wouldn't have noticed this, but Daniel fell in the middle of the hallway. Yeah. And now he's propped up, sitting up. Right. That right. we notice, but Tealuk doesn't notice. Yeah. I was busy watching a freak. Yeah. He freak the freak out. He did freak the freak out. Yeah. Um, but sort of Daniel at first wakes up as we see many people waking up in the state of the state of just give me coffee. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then he turns around and sees jokes and just kind of ugly screams. Mm -hmm. It's a great edit there too. That great cut. Yeah. Um, but yeah, up until here, it's still a horror movie. It is. If you have never seen this show before, it's a horror movie. Also, can we just why? We see this and we've seen this somewhere else. Why do their flash where are the cords on their flashlights going to? The cords on their, their flashlights oh. have cords on them. Oh, I don't know. They don't have some like protein ghostbuster pack on their back. <laughs> you don't know. Maybe <laughs> <they> don't. <laughs> 
I don't know. I haven't considered that. I mean, I can't figure out the mechanics of these flashlights. Wow, I'm going to have to pay attention now. So anyway, cut to the SGC in the gate room. SG4 is, and I'm assuming some medical people, uh -huh. went out to grab SG1, who brings us back through stretchers. And Teal brings Daniel through, and his state of sh like, his state shocks even Janet. Yeah, yeah. And as soon as Daniel gets through, he's just he's, acting real strange. As he will continue to. Yeah. Uh, he starts yelling that he has to go back, has to go back, even tries to go back through the gate, which obviously won't work, but the Stargate is shut down just in time, and he kind of just falls to the floor <laughs> in fear. And Jan Janet tries to go and like comfort him and soothe him, and he then turns. Yeah. And sort of grips onto Jan and is like, who are you and where am I? But super angry. Lily. But I am a dick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. No, this, uh, this personality is a real asshole. So, yeah. He's a real piece of fucking work. Uh-huh. Yeah, so we you. see Jack and Sam are in the infirmary. They'll be fine. They're just sleeping. Don't yeah. worry. They're just gonna, yeah. They're just sleeping it off. They're just, yeah. Nap time. <laughs> Daniel, however, is in the isolation room. Mm -hmm. Teal and Hammond are watching from above, and currently Daniel is very arrogant, annoying, loud, British-y? Yeah. I call Slightly. him right now just angry non-Daniel. Yeah. Um, and he wants to know what happened, why he's a prisoner. He's, he, you know, he's not going to be calm. Yeah. He was promised nothing would go wrong. Yeah. Someone's got to, he wants to speak to the manager. He does. He's yeah. not going anywhere. Yeah. Until he can speak to a manager about the situation. And he's like, you, Janet, person, short lady, as he yeah. calls or whatever, is not a member of my staff. That person, the reflection, is not me. Mm. Um, he has a serious headache, which Janet can help with, but yeah. he has to calm the fuck down. Yeah. Or he will be more restrained than he already is. It's basically angry non-Daniel versus a steely-eyed Janet. Uh-huh. So, get it, girl. Yeah, guess who's going to win? Get it. <laughs> Get it, girl. Because <laughs> um, he is sort of, he has sort of that, there's like a belt and uh -huh. it's to his wrist and he can't raise his hand super, super yeah. high. Um, and there is straps on the bed ready to go if he really gets back. Which even if he weren't, I feel like I've seen Janet in action. Oh, Janet could take him down. She's like, give me a chance. I don't get to fight often. Plus she has two like muscle meats yeah. behind her. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, Janet doesn't get to go off planet often or, or do any type of hand to hand. No, but she's probably trained in it. Uh, and so she's yes. probably in that space where she's like, give, me a, give me a chance. <laughs> give me a chance. I don't get to exercise this muscle often. Um, and then Daniel, uh, Daniel, who we're, we don't know is Matrice, but we'll uh -huh. find out, just throws it. You have no idea who I am, do you? Janet's like, I give no fucks who you are. Yeah. Bring me back my friend. <laughs> friend quotation marks yeah. so janet heads up to teal and hammond who are watching all of this and they're like well it's not daniel no. but it's also not a gould yeah but it has some gould has the gould arrogance feet <laughs> yeah, it really does yeah uh, and janet does know that the eg is cray cray yeah she's like some is not good <laughs> <laughs> i'm no expert wait i am uh, <laughs> there's kidding. there's signs of a coma but there's also signs of like a dozen other minds. Oh, all I just found another AKA. Jumbled up. It's the Smith song's girlfriend in a coma, but it's boyfriend in a coma. <laughs> AKA boyfriend in a coma. Okay, I'm done. But uh, she has no idea if it's life threatening. She has no idea anything about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So far, they've seen two, maybe three personalities, and at least this one claims to be a passenger on the crash ship. So assuming they all are. Sure. And we can see Daniel, <laughs> Matrice. In the room. Uh, and to be fair, I also, we've been watching a lot of How I Met Your Mother again recently, so I just hear, Patrice! <laughs> <laughs> I just hear Robin yelling. Just angry. I like Patrice! It. Um, we see Dan we see Matrice in the room below, and he just, like, throws the water at the window. He's just a piece of shit. He's, he's just, just like this. I'm telling you, he's the guy who wants to speak to the manager. He's just like a kid having a tantrum. <laughs> to return a used pair of shoes. Yeah. It's like, bitch, no. Yeah, this yeah. is, I mean, we find out this is a sovereign who clearly has had anything he's ever wanted. Like, Fair. he's just a tantrum thrower. Yeah. Um, and the others... It's a bummer that those people exist, but they do. They do. Hammond and Janet leave to do their thing, and, um, Teal'c is gonna remain here like he's holding Vigil. Mm -hmm. So we cut to 
Matrice, Daniel, whatever, mm. and beg your pardon, the sovereign of Thalsis, Thalsis, yeah. um, and he's taking his meds and being an asshole. Now, is this the part where he's like, find the small woman? No, that's okay. later. Got it. That's okay. later. So Janet checks on Sam and Jack, and Jack is just coming to, again, coffee's welcome. Yeah. Also, randomly in the background. <laughs> Is Siler with a bloody nose? <laughs> Why not? And I love um, Deloise did say that like there's a couple times a season where it's just Siler in the background of the infirmary with some injury. Help me, I'm injured. Yeah, I love that. They're just a recurring Siler injury. Um, <laughs> now I'm gonna look for it. Yeah. So Jack is doing fine, except for that nail in his head feeling. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sam wakes up right around then as well, and that coffee feeling is from some sort of neural shock <laughs> um and Hammond arrives surprisingly quickly that man can move yeah because it's the beginning of the scene where they're like go get Hammond yeah poof Ta -da, Hammonds. I've apparated here yeah basically <laughs> yeah. can you apparate inside of the SGC oh maybe it's protected like Hogwarts and that's what I'm thinking <laughs> But, but if anyone can, it's Hammond. I mean, we know that like Dobby can apparate inside of Hogwarts. Yeah, the Hammond's magic is like is like elf <laughs> magic, it's elf self magic. Yeah, I like it. Hammond is a house house elf. Oh god, he's descended from a long line of house elves. I mean, he is a small bald man. He is. <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> um. Anyway, Janet announces that their readings are fine. So whatever affected. Mm -hmm. Um, Daniel is not affecting them, which Jack is like, I want to get up and see. I'm fine. And then he tries to get up and he's like, No, I'm not. I stay here. Yeah. I live. Guess what today is? Today is listen to Janet Day <laughs> all day. All day, every day. Guess what tomorrow is? Listen <laughs> again to Janet Day. Now sit your ass down and listen to Janet. Does the day end in day? Then listen to Janet. <laughs> The end. So Matrice is like, either the meds you give me suck or this body's broken. Yeah. And Janet happens <laughs> to know full well that Daniel yeah. was in perfect health. So my notes here read, girl. Yeah, she does. With like seven <laughs> R's. Because <laughs> she knows. She knows. Look, she. First, first hand. First of all, she's a doctor. Mm -hmm. It's her job. Yes. But you. You gotta take it especially good inventory of the ones that matter a little more to you. <laughs> also, she's gonna take good care of all of them, and she's yes. gonna appreciate all of them for what they are. Let's just say I have again my own <laughs> ship, my own personal fanfic is that when Daniel descended, uh -huh. Janet was like, "No time like the present." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Let's go have a drink off base. Yeah. Done. Would you like a coffee? Coffee is code word <laughs> for sex. Yeah, from here on out, the, it's it is. Oh yeah, it just is. It's whereas look, whereas Sam and Jack are bound by the rules of duty and they have to see each other basically every day. Yeah, Jack and Daniel don't have to see well, each other I mean, every day. And technically, there's probably some patient doctor bounds, but is there though? Uh, probably. <laughs> Yeah, probably. I mean, but it's also like, what the fuck else we got to lose? Janet's, a, you know, Janet has lived and seen and is a mother yes. to an alien child and is, she's like, these fucking military rules in the grand scheme of things don't matter for shit. And ja Daniel's like, I already called him Daniel. Uh, <laughs> Daniel was like, I've ascended. I mean, none of the rules matter. I'm just saying that her thing is not necessarily like like military as much as like the whole Hippocratic sure, thing. Sure, sure. But even those, at the end of the day, like she's still a good doctor. She is. She's still gonna do what's appropriate. I mean, I'm just saying they're boning on the side. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The woman can hold two opposing thoughts in her mind. Uh huh. She is okay with that. Yeah, no, no. This is like my. Listen, I love my my Sam and Jack ship, uh -huh. but like Daniel and Janet is strong yeah. in my soul. It, I'm I'm digging it. Yeah. I'm digging it. But yeah, her three words. I doubt that. Yeah, girl, <laughs> girl. That's all it took. 
I'm in. I am yeah. with you. I'm both feet into the jam and she's jam. I can't even say Janiel. it. Janiel. Ship. Janiel. We're not. Look, my motto. <laughs> we're not here for a long time. We're here for, for a good, good time. time. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna get that tattoo somewhere. <laughs> And, and, and I mean, Matrice isn't, you know, like against this body. It's sure. stronger, younger than his own. Uh, he, you I know. mean, even he can appreciate the specimen that exactly. It is. I mean, he's probably some dough person sovereign. Yeah, yeah. And probably, and he could be seven. We don't know his age. He could be seventy years old. Yeah. And we had the same conversation. He might have in his prime been been uh, you know young and able, but now he's older. Well, it's going back to the same thing of when we had like Mini Jack. It's like, yeah. don't you want to be in, like, the younger, better version of you? Yeah. Mm, yeah. In yeah. terms of, like, if you get to a certain age, it's like, wouldn't you... Yeah, I'm not against being able to, like, yeah. run up a flight of stairs without exactly. getting winded again. <laughs> um, but also, it's the thing, like, when, T- was it, I think, Teal'c and, and Jack who swap bodies? Yes. And it's like, everything is not where I left it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... He's like, how are the, I mean, we'll deal with how the people are going to recognize Matrice later. People clearly need to look to their sovereign in times of disaster. And he very much believes the SGC did all of this. Mm. And he stands up and tries to make this power move against Janet. But he doesn't realize who he's fucking with and how strong her fortitude is. Don't. The guards move up to, like, try to defuse any situation. But frankly, like, you know, Matrice Daniel's body has strength, yes. Uh Janet could still fucking take him down if need be. Look, in the in the guise of the Daniel <laughs> ship, if she has been intimate with this body, she knows how to take it down. She knows where the Achilles heels are. Because also, they probably play wrong. <laughs> I can, I can see that. Yes. They play passionately. Passionate. Yes. <laughs> so he backs off, wondering how far from Earth uh, Dina is. <coughs> Bless you. Oh, sorry. Consume type me. Uh, how far away from Earth Adina is? Adrena. Ad- my fair Adrena <laughs> is. <laughs> my sweet Adrena. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. <laughs> uh, which was the Stromos' destination. And if you weren't sure that this guy is full of it and only takes care of him for himself, this is like your first inkling. You know, that they have the, the they say the J A. Are the germ thing is you know first you hint at something and then you like sh- for the people who are really reading into it can can predict it then you okay. say something a little more obvious so that most of the population sure, get this it is the first and then you me. like whack things over the head got it first hint that this is a scumball who only gives a shit about himself yeah Janet tries talking around the idea that some of the other passengers are right here in this room with him mm. as they converse she can sell Matrice is in some pain and suddenly it's not. Martise anymore. Mm-hmm. We learned that this is Tyron. Tryon. 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 King Tryon. <laughs> he's uh, like, it's li- like Tryon. I literally it's watched this episode an hour ago and I still can't remember names. <laughs> Tryon. Tryon. Uh, he's- Guys, if it makes y'all feel better, sometimes she calls me by a long name. <laughs> I do. <laughs> sometimes Hi, I know. We have the same name sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> the worst with names <laughs> anyways um and he trying is just as stunned at all of this as everyone else is um but he's key thing he's much more calm and he's helpful less about of it. a douchebag about it yes yeah. so we like trying it makes sense more. because of who he is and what his job was he's exactly. like oh fuck shit to the fan yeah so um, Janet explains that the ship crashed, how Dina got to be on Stromos. Tyron doesn't remember any of that. The last thing he remembers was the situation being super intense, some extreme lighting. He reported in that the compartment was secure. He went to bed and then woke up to Janet's face, which, mm-hmm. to be fair, waking up to Janet's I face mean, is not the worst thing in the world. There could be worse faces to exactly. see. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and the person he he reported to, we find out, is Farron. And he... So Janet explains that this is the fourth personality that they've, we've met. Oof. All in Daniel's body, which is impossible according to Tyron. There's trying to be too much. The outcome would be insanity. Um, he's stuck on how it's technically impossible. There are fail-safes. The only person you can return to is your own body. Janet's like... Well, it's happened. It's happened. Look in the yeah. mirror. 
legit it's here like legit you are possible this. yeah so this is the first personality that's been helpful to janet mm -hmm. they're like please stay we need your yeah. help <laughs> so tyron explains that when you sleep your mind is stored basically the computer mm -hmm. the same computer that supports your body um it, and so he has this little realization that the only way this could have happened is if his body's dead yeah well fuck that's uh not good times so up with Teal'c and Sam and Jack and Hammond. They're all checking on Daniel. Um, so it's basically like it needed somewhere to go, so it all went to Daniel. Well, As far as we kind of understand. As far as we understand right now, yeah. yeah. How that happened, we're not sure. Right. Um, they're caught up on what happened to Daniel, and I love how Jack dares Teal'c to say preliminary and in, in, in electroencephalogram again, yeah, yeah. and he's about to. Before he's like, cuts him off. Yeah. He's like, whatever, dude. I've been practicing this all day. Yeah. <laughs> Hammond explains that since Janet declared a code 17, only her and a few staff members have direct contact with Daniel. And apparently it looks like code 17 normally has to do with the ghoul. Because yeah. Sam's like, ghoul? I've decided that code 17 means ghoul infestation. Sure. Sounds right. That's my word for it. They're not. They're just not taking any chances at the moment. And I feel like that's that's put in there for later use. And I don't know if this is true or not, but I feel like that's like, hey guys, remember this. Remember code. There's a seventeen number. Yeah. So Sam wants to go try and take a look at the cryogenic system, see if she can discover anything to help. Mm -hmm. And Jack is gonna stay here and relieve Teal'c of the Daniel vigil. vigil. Yeah. Um. And even knowing that he can't have access to Daniel directly because of the code. Yeah. So back in it's that kind room, of all bummer things. Right it's now. super it's bummer. Lots of science and bummer things. Janet and Tyron are still working through this problem, sort of at the same time that conversation was going on. Mm -hmm. um, Tyron is pretty sure his body's dead. Yeah. Well, okay. bummer. Uh, so what happens is they separate the consciousness from the body, since like if your consciousness in your body, the waking up process from the cryogenic sleep damages your brain so much that basically the important part to be gone, you need yeah. kind of a shell. So they basically take your whole mind away. Then they can wake up your body without a mind. So it's then like preserve everything separately yeah. and then put it back together. Exactly. The memory requirements are huge and each capsule has an active matrix memory module that only can hold one mind. Yikes. Imagine the power in that thing. Yeah. Cool. And and because so I I forgot to write this down, but um, like the mind is so complex. I remember this this thing in one of my science classes in college that talked about. Now this was more going on about the memory requirements to transport someone, like Star Trek style. Okay. But basically, the human mind is if you were going to transfer it to data. Okay. Is basically you need you need the equivalent of being able to store like every piece of written, like written books yeah. in human history. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Minds are pretty fucking cool. Like every written word. Yeah. Like all of them. That's a lot of them. It's a lot mm -hmm. of them books. <laughs> and it's constantly learning new things too. It is. So um, it's like a piece of memory that can keep building on itself while it's mm -hmm. storing. Yeah. Woof. So, but the computers on each capsule can only hold one mind, though. And so they can't just dump, like, anyone who's not Daniel mm -hmm. into, into one of these one. because yeah. it's not big enough. And nor can you separate these into all minds to sort of, like, filter them into different ones. Sure. Because he has this great analogy you know he takes a cup of water yeah and he pours it into a pitcher and he's like now you can't put only those atoms you can't separate only those atoms back out yeah of the Look, hole again. it's a bummer that Tryon ends up getting stuck inside Farron's body forever because yeah. he would be a great like Bill Nye the science guy he would be yeah Bill 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 Bill, Bill, <laughs> Bill Nye, Nye the, the science, science guy. guy okay I'm done inertia is a property of matter um <laughs> So now that their minds have merged, they're just kind of stuck this way mm -hmm. in a jumble. And um, try and start hearing voices. And Janet, knowing that this is the most useful person so far, is like, stay with me. Please don't. Stay with me. Yeah. Um, and suddenly it's Daniel. And oh, she knows God. it's Daniel. And he only surfaces for a moment. She knows that look in his eye. Yes. 
And he's confused as everyone else's. Yeah. And we pull back and we see that this is like a still on a monitor now in the briefing room. Uh, He was only there for a second. And then we had another person. She couldn't really tell us anything It's one of those things where you learn like, oh, this is how people tell identical twins apart. Yeah. It's like the second you can see. If you know someone well enough, Mm -hmm. like the look in their eye is specific. Yes. And even in the people that you know who's you know, mood changes or identity changes or something changes in them and they're not having a good time. You're like, yeah. something's different. Mm-hmm. Something in you is not the same anymore. Yeah. It's weird. It's a weird thing to learn. It's, yeah. It is, but it's how you know you know someone. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. And Janet knows Daniel. She knows She knows him. That so, body is it's fit. It's a wonderland. But... <laughs> so... <laughs> so <laughs> so dr mckenzie i know kaylee that was a really bad joke dr <laughs> mckenzie has determined that there's one coma like line in the eeg and we're, we're holding yeah. on to that daniel yeah. he's basically just turtling himself yeah into a coma what a smart thing for the mind to be able to do yeah and to just and so the others are sort of overwhelming and Daniel's just kind of hiding in the corner going, I'm just going to stay here. Until this shit gets worked out a little bit. I'm better. not going to get mixed up in this in Yeah, this mess. yeah. As for the others, there could be almost a dozen. That's a lot of personalities. That's a lot of personalities. So, so yeah. Sam wants to go back and study the system, see if she can separate them out. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Hammond's a little wary on that. You know, Teal yeah. found Daniel at the base of an empty chamber. Someone could be awake there. Someone yeah. could have done this. Um, and maybe Daniel was just the only person he was able to get to before Teal woke up. Which, which is, ultimately is true. It ultimately yeah. is true. Um, but, like, if the bodies are dead, then Janet assumes this was a desperate measure to save these people, that Daniel is a literal lifeboat. Yeah. The ship hit a rock instead of an iceberg. Yeah. And I love that that line comes from Sam because yeah. Sam would be able to take this moment with people are essentially grieving um, and be able to be in that space, but also be like, I can understand this intellectually and be like, Oh, that's what, so Daniel's a lifeboat. Yeah. Because she is the one, it's not Janet who gives us that line. It's Sam, mm-hmm. which I really love that about the yeah. way they did it. Cause I don't know that Janet could be, approach that so coldly right now and cold's the wrong word yeah That's so matter of factly so yeah so clinically yes yeah, yeah. so um sg12 is gonna go back with sam she's gonna yeah. study a thing uh-huh. and sg12 is gonna find a person because that's what sam do that's what sam, sam be do. studying <laughs> <laughs> so back in the isolation room and blowing um, shit up we meet someone new oh god we meet keenan He's clearly very young and he's very frightened. It's it's and he sounds like a character from our DD campaign Meepo. He does not like Meepo. I'm gonna cry again. <laughs> um also again, I it just, is astounding to me how how Michael Shanks can do that. That's what I was saying. I, I just sorry, if, yeah. If it, it, all the other acting in this episode is is stunning mm-hmm. from from Michael, but this role, in order to do channel a kid like this and not have it be the cheesiest like it's horny believable. thing he, he completely believable it does and he does remind me of Meepo he does a little Meepo, and I'm gonna cry <laughs> okay. we had a we had a serious encounter with our Meepo who's our very much like a little keen and a little bit older a little, a little yeah. less naive maybe in a little sense. older yeah but yeah it was Oh, Keenan. Well, there was some rescuing of a meeple that happened where where it got pretty intense. Yeah, it got real intense. Yeah, uh, we'll come back to Keenan in a second. Yeah. So SG twelve and Sam and Teal cut out. Hammond emphasizes <laughs> that this is. Are you done, Kaylee? Our neighbor came home, and Kaylee wanted to let us know about it. Kaylee, are you done? Thank you. Okay. So SG twelve and Sam and Teal cut out. Hammond emphasizes how the last thing they need is what happened to Daniel happening to yeah. anyone else. Guys, put on your tinfoil hats. Yeah. <laughs> so nobody gets in your brain. <laughs> so back to Keenan. The mm. last thing he remembers is his father, Farron. Yeah. Um, telling him that he will dream sweet dreams and he will wake up around Adrena and his father <sighs> will be right here. 
Hundreds of years will pass, and all of this crap will be distant history. God. This, and he closes his eyes. It's just fucking a most adorable thing ever. I know. Most adorable. breaking adorable thing. Ugh. So Keenan didn't want to go. Because for years they knew a dark star, which I'm assuming is a black dwarf, yeah. was going to pass close enough to, to their own star, which I don't even know how the mechanics of that worked. We're going to go with it because the kid's adorable. Uh, yeah. <laughs> passes close enough to the star to cause a massive flare that was going to You know, we can call it a little Dallas. bit, too, that they simplified it to tell the kid the story that way. Yes. But somehow their son caused a massive flare that basically... Uh, which it's interesting. We're watching this on the same week that the Parker Solar Probe was launched. Oh, because the it's Parker still going into the sun. It's going, yeah, it's heading to the sun, and a lot of what it's doing is it's actually going to scoop up some of the corona, which is kind of cool. Some oh, of the winds cool. and the gases that are in the outer, outer, outermost part of the sun. Yeah. And part of that is trying because we can't predict when solar flares happen. Right, they just happen. Which is part of why the 19, the, when we, they went back to 1969, uh -huh. and that's how they got Ford is because yeah. Sam happens to remember when solar flares, or right. not Sam, but they end up remembering when solar flares happen. Yeah. Hammond looked them up and wrote the letter and right. sent it back. But if we have a strong enough solar flare, like it can cause massive damage to the planet. You know, Makes sense. I don't know if we're going to get one that's big enough to end all life on the world, but if you get it big enough, it certainly can crash all the technology yeah. and stuff like this. So yeah. that's actually the Parker Solar Pro. Part of what it's doing is like doing a bunch of investigations. See yeah. if we can do some more predictions and stuff on that and yeah. see how the mechanics, but basically this flare engulfed the planet Dallas Talus, Dallas, um, and is this kid's whole life? Yeah, he knew the world was going to end. Yeah, that entire I wrote it down word for word. It says, "I knew my whole life that the world was going to end." Yeah, holy crap! So in this case, not in ice, but in fire. There's <laughs> Robert there's Frost so, Berlin. <laughs> there's so many ways that this. There's so many stories to tell in this story. Yeah. Um, early in this, this starts like a horror movie. Yes. And if you're, um, Martise, yeah, this is a horror movie. Yeah. This entire thing is a horror movie. Yeah. Um, uh, I can't imagine. There's so much story in this kid's story. Oh, I know. There's so much there. There's so much background. This is one of the few episodes that I'm like, I need to know more about the people on the planet. Mm -hmm. I need to know more. Anyway. God. Yeah. yeah. So they built the Stromos and two other ships mm -hmm. as these these lifeboat ships. I mean, literal yeah. lifeboat ships, but there wasn't enough space on even those three ships for everyone. Yeah. So there was a lottery, much like the movie Deep Impact. Uh, yeah. There was a lottery, and since his father was an officer on the ship, he could bring one person from the family. Yeah. And his mom naturally made him choose their son. Of course she did. Um, but mom did not make the lottery. No yeah. one he knows made the lottery. Curiously. Again, you, you try not to sort of inflict your own worst possible things, but yeah. you're like, was it even a fair lottery? How interesting that all the sovereigns got picked. Uh-huh. Um, which, again, there's they did this in this, going back to Deep Impact, like that's something that they did. They're like, you know, the, the world leaders, some of the smartest people, some of these people that you you – you would want to survive sure. this got the first half of it. And the second half of it got to be a lotto. Yeah. So I can, you know, I can see that. Um, but who's to say, I mean, to me, as far as I'm concerned, sovereigns are politicians. It, it is. So it's like all the politicians get to go. For yeah. How all, the, all the nation's presidents. Yeah. Get like to go. I'm, I'm totally with you. Like yeah. all the smart people. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There's a little Let's more repopulate there. with the smart people. But how curious that all the politicians got picked. And, and, you know, it's one of those things where yeah. if this was happening on earth, yeah, I, I agree with it or not, but I can imagine all the presidents. That's the shit that I'm talking yeah, about. Would, yeah, would get saved. Yeah. You know? I'm not down with that. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> um, I'm guessing, you know. Keenan wanted to stay with his mom because I can imagine this, building these three ships was like the only thing, the whole planet, yeah. it's like in contact, one of my favorite books, like the whole planet was put together to build these three ships. Yeah. I can imagine dad wasn't home that much. Yep. 
He didn't know this guy. So I can imagine he doesn't have a good father son relationship here. Nope. He, not it's really just him fault. and his mom. Yeah. And it's not through anyone's fault. It's just because of the situation it was. He's just a hardworking dad. Yeah. So I wanted to stay with his mom. He didn't get to. So Keenan starts crying and Janet soothes him, head in his lap, when suddenly it's not Keenan no God more. God damn it. Matrice! Yeah. So on the Stromos, SG-12 has started a full search of the ship. Sam mm -hmm. notices how low the power levels are. Mm -hmm. Not even sure they could get anything working at this point. Yeah. And they certainly don't have enough power to wake anyone up for help. Mm -hmm. um, back in the isolation room, uh, Matrice wants to talk to someone with authority. Please, asshole. You are. It's Janet. Like, that's the authority you're going to get at this point. And wants to know why Janet has involved the boy in all of this. I think we've passed the part where, like, that small woman. Maybe yeah. we haven't. Yeah. Uh, no, I think we did. Yeah. We did. It was early in. It was when yeah. he was having the first headache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's fine. It's fine. It's just this. I'm done. I'm just done with this He's asshole. He's just a giant tool. Yeah. I, I think now they're just trying to make it real clear. Like, hey, this is not really yeah, the best we, guy. We get it. Yeah. We got it. Um. So, Sam's figuring out the power solution. And, and Teal hears someone, something behind him. Mm -hmm. And they keep talking while they move in position and quickly capture the guy. Yeah. It's Farron. And it's clear yeah. this guy is not a threat. And he's like, please don't hurt us. Yeah. God. So back in the isolation room, um, the sound of all the voices is driving Matrice to be much more yelly than he normally is. Which is already something. fucking awful. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, he's, he's just going on about how he has responsibilities. He can't stay here. You truly get the idea that... He thinks he has full rights to this body, regardless of the original Yeah, he just is ready to, like, remove all these personalities because mm -hmm. I got shit to do. Exactly. Because I am here to preserve Because me. I am the sovereign, and it's Listen, my destiny to fucking, rule over Adrena. Listen, little finger. You'll get yours at the end. This is clearly a democracy on this planet. Yeah. Um... This is back and forth, and Janet's... This, I, this is one of my favorite... This is one of my favorite moments yeah. of the episode... Um, Janet's like, you don't understand the seriousness of your condition. Yeah. And Matrice yells back that Janet doesn't understand who she's talking to. Um, and Janet yeah. doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. He does not belong. You don't belong in that man's body. And I intend to take it back. And then take it home with me. And she will by <laughs> sheer force of yeah. willpower yeah. if she has she's to. She's going to find a fucking way. Do yeah. not fuck with Janet. Yeah. And no, she's done. She's done with the nicety. She's trying. She's done trying to play ball with this dude. It's uh -huh. like get the fuck out of my face. You don't matter here. Your yeah. your whatever yeah. your position, your power doesn't exist anymore. Doesn't exist because now you are the obstacle between me, this man that I want to keep alive and intact. This is my world. Yeah, you me. live. You. This is my room. You're not in charge. Here. <laughs> I not. am in charge. I am the captain now. Yeah, look at me. <laughs> I am Captain. And now. everyone who is a genial shipper raises their hands in rejoicefulness. All of the hands in the air. And you wave them like you just don't care. <laughs> yes. Except they care a lot, guys. <laughs> so back on the Stromos, uh, they're chatting with Farron. Mm -hmm. He to him he had absolutely no choice in this. Mm -hmm. There was no other way around, and he really needs Teal and Sam to do the same thing. Because it's the only way to save all of these people with all the power yeah. failures going on. No, thank you. Yeah. Um, Farron found a way to override the fail safes. And, and these people on this ship are the last souls of an entire world. And they, I mean, I understand the distress he's in and why is. he's in it. Yeah. yeah. And and he it, he's like, it, they can't end this way. Yeah. And it's not like he hasn't clearly taken on the task himself. He yeah. just can't carry all the way. Because... He's like, look, if, if you guys can just carry a few souls, then then we can send the power that we save from that back to the rest of them and like yeah. sure up the system. Because Farron doesn't know how many more people he can hold. He God. has 13 or so, so far, and that might be the max. Fuck. You get the feeling like he doesn't even remember how many people are in him. Yeah. And no, they, he's just exhausted. He's just yeah, spent. He's just he doing everything he can. So they, you know, they sent out the distress beacon. Others will come for them. They'll sort out the whole mind blender thing later on. They just have to, he's, it's, he's grasping at straws. I like mind blender. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
the AKA. The AKA mind blender. So when the ship crashed, and who knows why that happened, it's not important, although it could be a cool other episode. Yeah. Farron was awoken automatically, but the power to do that fucked everyone else in that row. So there's so much guilt he's carrying along with everything yeah. else. Yeah. It's, it's the survi survivor's guilt. It is. Um, and, and he had to think fast, and he only could think of one way to save everyone. Mm -hmm. So, and if he tried to wake anyone else, the power that would be needed to wake someone would, would just fuck the system fry. again. Yeah. So he walked as far as he could on the planet. There's nothing there. There's not water. There's not food. There was basically no supplies on the ship because no one was meant to yeah. be awake. Um, and no clue how long he's been awake or what he's been eating to stay alive. Yeah, just we're just gonna I take him at face value. Wouldn't fault him if he was forced to go cannibal. Eating people. Yeah. It, look, at, at this point, you do tip to say. Right now, we're just hoping that he hasn't been. This has didn't happen more than like two days ago. Exactly. <laughs> let's just let's just stay there. So Farron says he's not alone. There's a democracy of one in his head, and at this mm. point, Sam is like, if you had talked with us yeah. instead of attacking us, and Farron goes full Gollum Schmeagle. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which, and listen to the comment. It's clear that this was a reference to Gollum Schmeagle. Yeah. Um, yeah. None of them, like, you know, none of you would have consented to do this. Mm -hmm. But we had to do it to save our people. And Tilk waking up so fast scared most of the people inside Ferrance. So they only sure. got to Daniel. Yeah. Sam offers to help. Mm -hmm. They could wake everyone up, find a new home. It may not be Adrena, but something nice. These people clearly never heard of the Stargate. Yeah. But Tilk knows how to negotiate. Yeah. And, you know, it's great because Sam's like, look, I feel for you, but I, this isn't going to work this way. Yeah. This just is, this is, we are drawing a very big boundary. We're creating this boundary. This we're drawing this line. Yeah. That We can't do that. We can help you with other shit, but we are not taking, like, I love how clear she is about this. Yes. She's like, this is not happening. So you have to move on from that thought. Mm -hmm. And I, and I love how Sam's like, we can help you. We can find a new place. We can bring on systems to yeah. secure it. And she looks like, but first let's talk. Yes. Yeah, it's it's this really great approach of like Tilk's open to yeah. negotiation Good and Sam's like, like <laughs> but also we're not doing these things. Yes. Yeah. Um Tilk is not playing games. The only way, the mm -hmm. only way we will help you is if you return Daniel to being just That's Daniel. the other great part about this, is mm -hmm. they're like they've had to learn to be this cool. Yeah. In the face of an entire people. Yeah. Like, look, we get it. Your entire world is gone. This is a big fucking deal. I think early seasons, they might have had a little more uh, struggle with this. I think in earlier seasons, it may have been like, oh, we're going to help you and hopefully you will help us back. That too. But it's this idea of like someone who were less experienced with the work that they're doing yeah. would be tortured by these decisions. But they're like, no, we're here and this is where we are. Yeah. And there's something that just shows how, I mean, they're just built they've for- They've become a little more hardened to yeah. do these. Yeah. yeah. And, and hardens, I feel like hardens works, but- they're not cold to it. They're not. They're cold just to like it. this is just reality now. And, and I, yeah, I mean, Harden just in terms of it's like of, a cop, like yeah. an age cop. Like, yeah, this is just what the world is. So exactly. we fucking deal with it. Um, Farron's like, like we can't, we can't do that because those some of those minds in in Daniel are some of our most precious. Yeah, and there would be literally nowhere for the go. We would lose those. Yeah. Um. I mean, this could save everyone on the ship, but yeah. one of those souls is Farron's son. And I yeah. think this is the first time Farron doesn't use a plural. It's not one of those my one of those souls is our son. It's one of those souls is it's my mine. son. Yeah, it's him talking directly. So back in isolation, Matrice is in severe pain, and Tiana calls up a fairly strong dose of fentanyl. Um, <laughs> but suddenly it's Tyron again. And he has a better tolerance for pain, so he's good. Yeah. And Janet's like, thank the fuck. Yeah. Oh, God, I it's you. I hate that other guy. Yeah. Can we never make him come again? Try and you stay here forever. And then Sam comes and calls Janet out. Teal heads up into the observation room with Jack and Hammond. Um, Teal trusts Farron simply because of how much he has to gain in this situation. Sure. Yeah. 
So Farron walks in the room and Tyron steps to. Um, and of all the crew, Tyron would think this is impossible. And out of all the crew, Farron is the one who would figure it out. Yeah. I like that little. Duo. I do love their relationship. Though. Yeah. It's really nice to see like two. Okay. Not all of these people are assholes. Yes. Like there's, these are good people. They are good people. They're just driven. They, this has been shoving more, uh, Martise down our throat a lot. Yes. So it's good to get this nice fr- yeah. drink of cool water. You know what I mean? So here's the deal. These people, SG, the SG, you know, SG1, these, yeah. these earthlings can save all of us, but there will have to be sacrifice from, from Tyron and the others inside Daniel. And it's, I mean, it's a reasonable deal if you think about it. It's a shitty deal. Yeah. But, you know, it's these few people. That's what we can do. Yeah. Exactly. It's these few people to save the rest of the ship. Well, and it's also like, it's this or nothing. Yeah. Like, that's what we got. Yep. If we weren't here at all, you'd all just be fucked. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So, Tyron will do whatever is necessary, whatever yeah. Farron asks. Yeah. But Matrice's ideas. He's like, fuck no, this is my body now, bitch. No. And Farron bows because it's the sovereign. No. And he swore an oath to follow his sovereign. And Farron's like, I can't do it now because he said no. Fuck Fuck that dude. And Jack's like, for crying out loud, and heads down there. my favorite, like an angry for crying out loud. And he just pulls Farron up, and he tells him that his sovereign is dead. Uh And, like, so will his soul. Like, if Jack just cuts the sovereign out, then there's no more sovereign. Yeah. It's done. Yeah, done. And Jack will not lose Daniel for this Malfoy monobi. Yeah. That's sitting here. Yeah. And he tells Farron to do it. Like, just... You listen to me. This is right done. Now. I'm the boss now. Yeah. Um, and Daniel goes again into full Gollum Schmeagle. Yeah. Matrice will not surrender the body at any cost. And Tyron's like, this isn't our body. And no. everyone on the Stromos will die. And Matrice is like, fine. This let is them. a hostage negotiation it is. right now. It yeah. is. And Matrice is like, fuck all of them. Mm-hmm. I don't give a shit about anyone else on that ship Ever. of my people except for myself i'm so glad he says that because i feel like that's the turning point it is it's like oh you're a piece of shit got yep. it uh and and farron's like no for for 12 years my job has been saving the people of dallas yeah and i will do anything i need to do to save yep. those people yeah and i'm fairly sure matrice pushes keenan up front up to the surface yeah. on purpose yep which yep. breaks farron and all of us. And me. Yeah. <laughs> Farron tells him his son that he must sacrifice too, and they will be together. And he's like, This is really shitty, son. Yeah. But yeah. But his but here's the thing is it's not it's not the worst option they have here. Because Keenan's body's not around either, right? It's not. No, because his body's dead. So it's either you live all together in this one brain or you die. Well, so here's here's what I think. Yeah. Because there's not a definite line. Mm-hmm. You, I get the feeling until this end scene yeah. that they're talking about just removing those yeah. minds that aren't Daniel, and they wouldn't have a place to go because Farron's already like, That's I can't true. take At on any more minds. Just saying we're gonna just yeah. So I think it's here when he sort of actually sees his son and he's like, we're going to be together. He's like, I'm just going to dump all of your brains into my brain and we'll sort and it out And whatever happens, happens. Yeah. Exactly. Um, that's uh, that's what I get the feeling Yeah, he's, it's the ultimate sacrifice. But that also means you get Matrice in your brain too. Yeah. Matrice! Hopefully he dies. <laughs> so <laughs> on the Stromos, Daniel and Farron are both in chambers next to each other. And the, the again, the... They're going to just dump all of the minds into Farron. Yeah. Um, I think knowing his people will be safe and then, and then everyone is willing to take their chances to get fe- like Keenan and Farron together. All of the other brains that are in Farron and everything else, they're like, let's just risk it because our options are or death. Yeah. So, so fuck like, it. Fuck what it. Else do we have take to our do? chances. At least maybe this son and father could be together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Janet can't tell yet if they all made it. Hopefully one specific person did not. Yeah. Um, but Daniel's <laughs> readings are back to normal. Yeah. Uh, and since he went to turtle coma mode, yeah. he was protected from the separation. Smart. Thank and, God the brain did that. Yes. And Farron's going to stay asleep until the others can be revived and they're going to take care yeah. of him. 
Um, so Sam Damn. and Teal'c come up. The power is running. Um, they can start waking people up soon, start relocating them after that, which they're going to leave for SG4 because they love that kind of stuff. Yeah, they're like, we're not interested in cleanup work. And Daniel wakes up with a serious nail in the head kind of headache. Um, yeah. And really needing coffee. Like, I, wouldn't all of you the have coffee. A, made him prove himself a little bit further before? I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I would have been so uncomfortable after all that Martise shit. Well. That I would have been like, I got to make sure it's not Martise. But I can, I will say, like, it's pretty obvious it's not Martise. Yeah, yeah. And there is only one reading now. True. In the EEG. True. It's kind of like, what's your Patronus charm? <laughs> you know, like, how do I know this is you? What would Daniel's Patronus charm be? Oh, a, a fucking, um, some sort of, like, Egyptian think. mythical character. Maybe just a cat. Yeah. Yeah. That could work. I don't know. I just don't know it. And, the, and the cats can also be left alone. Like, I can feel like if he's going to have an animal, it's something that, like, they can yeah. be left alone. I can see that. Yeah. Janet's is definitely something that's like takes care, like is a very like homey type of. Or some sort of protector. It's some a, sort she's of protector. got like a big guard dog. See, now is. Actually, that's more of a Jack. Yeah. No, Jax is a fish. <laughs> Jax is a fish. Jax is just a fish. Yeah. I feel like Sam could have a really cool insect. Can we have insects as Patronuses? I don't know. I mean, We've only not? sort of seen mammals and aliens. Teox is a mantis shrimp. <laughs> I'm making that call right Teox now. Teox Patronus is a mantis shrimp? Yep. Because it's a badass little sh shit. I don't know how well you know the mantis shrimp. <laughs> I do know. I do Being know the mantis, mantis shrimp. shrimp is a stone cold killer. <laughs> a beautiful stone cold killer. See here, and I see, I see Teox as being like a a large, like a large cat. Like a jaguar or something? Yeah. Cheetah. Mantis shrimp. Mantis shrimp. Yeah. Daniel can be a stallion. Oh! <laughs> anyway. <It's> hair. <laughs> yeah. But Janet gets her man. Yep. Yep. And uh, and next, next up, next episode is Enemy Mine. Mm. Interesting. Also, I have to add, we've missed like a for crying out loud and a couple indeed, so I need to add those to the Let's list do it. right here. Let's put them on our um, list. We're up to 26, Got and it. for crying out loud, I think we're up to 30. There's one this episode, six. and there was one last time, I think. I think, we're, I think 36 and 26. That feels good. Let's yeah. stick with it. Um, And we didn't. I thought I saw Deloise in one of those pods, but I don't think I did. So. I did not see one. Alrighty. Are we ready to do our. Top, top of top of the things. Yeah, if top I can the get my sheet to work here, which I may not be able to. Here we go. Okay. Nope. Let's try this again. Copy. I'm looking at things. Paste. Got I'm it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. So so far we have watched in season seven. Yes. We have watched. They're already out of order. Fallen. Homecoming. Yep. Fragile Balance. Which we're considering following Homecoming one episode. Y yeah, I guess we yeah. are. Yeah. Um, Fallen, Homecoming, Fragile Balance, Orpheus, Revisions, and Lifeboat. So Fallen and Homecoming are one. So we yeah. have five. So what we need to decide is what order these five go. I mean, my top is Fallen, Homecoming. Oh, okay. Um, my top is Lifeboat. Surprisingly okay. enough. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so let's see. My, yeah, my top is Fallen Homecoming. I think number two for me is Lifeboat. Um, I'm willing to put those in the opposite order. Okay. So I'm going to go Lifeboat and then Fallen slash Homecoming. So now I've got... Oh, but I have Fragile Balance yeah. too. I'm surprised Fragile Balance is not up higher on your list. I'm, I know. Uh, I may have to... I, Oh, I'm so hard not putting that. I'm <laughs> so hard putting that below lifeboat. Just it's for sheer, you. you know what? This is not for quality of the episode. This is for sheer well, watchability. This is just Nixie. Yeah, 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 I know. It's what does Nixie like? Um, <laughs> you know what? No, you know what? Fragile Balance is my number one right now. 
Okay. Fragile Balance is my number one right go. now, just because I enjoy it just so damn much. Um, so mine's right now Fragile Balance, Fallen Homecoming, and Lifeboat. So mine is actually not that at all. Mine is Lifeboat. Yes. Then Fallen and Homecoming. Yep. And then Revisions. Okay. And then Fragile Balance. Okay. Uh, and then Orpheus. Now, it's not to say I did not enjoy Fragile Balance. I no. clearly did. But yeah. I love, love, love the Planet of the Weakness. Yes. And the Doctor Who feel of Revisions. Plus, I liked the just something about the set. Again, this is just one that I would watch a lot. Yeah. Um, and Lifeboat, I've already watched three times. Because <laughs> I really fucking like it. Uh, and I want to know more about the story of these people. Uh, there's just something to it. Uh, it's weird how your fingerprint does. Uh, work yeah, on my I know. Phone. Well, mine, <laughs> mine does the thing where it's if it's been under like a minute. Yeah, it'll, it'll wake up. up. Um, it, Lifeboat's just rewatchable to me. It's one of the few where I'm like, here, somebody come watch this with me. You don't actually have to know a lot about you Stargate you to don't. watch it. It's a very, uh, it's a very don't blink type episode. Yes, yes. And yeah. so there's, to me, that does it. That brings it in. And Revisions has the same feeling to it. Yeah. The only reason that Revisions comes below Fallen and Homecoming is because it's our big goodbye to Jonas. Yeah. Hi, Jonas. I actually yeah. have Orpheus above Revisions. Oh, okay. And and I can't tell you why okay. i just love teal i basically it's for that end fight and like sure, yeah. having and it's riot good, yeah. and bray tech and like everyone just kick the fuck out of everyone it's a good episode it just doesn't hit me as hard as the others yeah it just know, doesn't yeah. yeah there's nothing wrong with it but that's where we're at Woo, we made it through. We made it through. <laughs> Alrighty, so we are going to not have Enemy Mine next week. Correct. Enemy Mine, I apologize, we'll have to wait for a week longer because Grace is, one, going out of town, and two, starting school next week. However, we will have something that people have been waiting for for dun, quite a while. Dun, 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 dun. We are getting Grace to watch the first episode of Farscape. Yes! And so we will have sort of an instant instant view. I'm ready. Yeah, we're going to do like an Instacast, yes. if you will. Uh, a reaction. Yes. Which I think will be fun. After the first episode so you'll of get, our skin. Yeah, so you'll get that next week. And then the following week, we will be on Enemy Mind. Yes. Uh, and as always, thanks, guys, for listening. Uh, did I miss anything? No. Okay. Except our locations that you find. Oh, oh. the one thing I will say is. Um, oh, we're, okay, we'll get there. Well, the one thing I'll say is, is, is if you want to hear Nixie rant about a lot of topics, oh, right. uh, I had the opportunity to guest star on For Geek's Sake last week, um, and we, in a row, covered... Um, Doctor Who? Well, n well that, Doctor Who's at the end. That oh. was the rant. Oh, okay. No, I w r hardcore ranted, Got because it. we covered uh, Ruby Rose being cast as Batwoman, and the insane oh. reaction to that. Okay. And then we talked about uh, people body shaming Grant Gustafson. Whoa. Yeah, they said he was too skinny and didn't block. It's just, yeah. Okay. And then we talked about uh, uh, Space Force. Oh, God. And then we talked about the popular film category at the Oscars. So it was just a whole bunch oh. of Nixie ranting. <laughs> I haven't listened to that yet. Guys, let's go listen to that. So it's, it's for geek's sake. It's for geek's sake. And then we got into Doctor Who and the new season of Doctor Who. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. I was just, there was a lot of angry Nix. It's a lot of rants, rants happening. It was you a were lot a of rant again. I was oh, a rant I again. Get in again. I was a rant again. Yeah. And then I talked about the Parker Space Probe and that was not ranting. That was just fun times. Yeah. Uh, guys. As always, you know where to find us. On Twitter, we're at Terra Podcast. On Facebook at There's No Place Like Terra. Um, you can email us at There's No Place Like Terra at gmail.com. And patreon.com slash There's No Place Like Terra. Uh, you can rate us, like us, review us on Apple Podcasts, which is super helpful for us. Yes, for sure. Um, and we'll see you next week with a little Farscape thing. Farscape! Bye, guys. Bye.